you, I was asked to share something on fasting. Everybody say fasting. fasting. I know I'm chubby. It's not obvious that I'm the expert guy here, but you know what? I can assure you that I've done it several times. This. Well, among you here, if I will invite you or someone will invite you into a buffet of food in a five-star restaurant, you're going to come. Raise your hand. Come on. You just don't know. We might do it, all right? All right, good. And how about this? Who among you, you're going to come if someone invites you to a buffet of water? Anyone? Pastor Nelly, right here. Good job, Pastor Nelly. Well, now I understand why fasting is not so popular. Among other spiritual disciplines like praying, reading the scripture, being generous, you know that they said that fasting is not really very popular among Christians, even among Christians. For 100 years, from 1861 to 1954, do you know that there was no, a single book, not even a single book published about fasting? Do you know that? For 100 years. Probably because they, they, they're thinking, we're thinking that fasting is just for, for these guys, for monks, for Shaolin masters. And not for ordinary people like you and me. Awesome people like you and me. Especially for Filipinos, you know, I mean, I think this is universal. We love to eat. Who among you love to eat? Like me, I love eating. I, I love your food here. And uh, we're, we're, you know, we're used to thinking that, of course, you know, we're, we're supposed to eat three times a day. And as Filipinos, it's like six times a day or five times a day. I don't know here in Brisbane, but I think you love to eat as well. And just the idea uh, that we're, you're going to do a prayer and fasting a week from now, I think some of you probably are already feeling sick about that. Oh, it's fasting. Oh, it's one week. But do you know that in the scripture, Okay, the word fasting, just the word fasting appeared 70 times. Just in the scripture. Now, there are three types of fasting. So this is like, you know, a preaching and an educational thing, a teaching as well. You know, right? So there are three types of fasting. First one is partial. Everybody say partial. By like Daniel. He said, I ate no delicacies. I ate no funnel cake. Okay. No meat, no Angus beef or wine, coke. Okay. Entered my mouth. That's partial. So he just ate vegetables for three weeks. That's partial fasting. Now there's what we call food fasting. Everybody say food fasting. Food. This is by, by, by Paul. This was uh, done by, by Paul in the scripture. It says here, everybody read with me. Why don't you go? And for three days, he was without sight, neither ate nor drunk. After experiencing the Lord, um, in the road to Damascus, he decided to, to linger more in the presence of God and ate nothing. I think that's the effect. That's the effect of, of meeting the Lord. You want to stay more with Him and, and enjoy His presence. And that's why the Apostle Paul did not eat for the next three days. So that's full fasting. Now the third type of fasting is this. Extreme fasting. Everybody say extreme. Can you do this? Okay, this was... Um, at least in the scripture, we can see that Moses did this. Okay, for 40 days, he said there, When I went up to the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, or the iPod, the tablets of the covenant of the Lord made with you, I remained on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. Okay, that's extreme. Uh, no bread, uh, no bread, no water. That's extreme. And you, do you notice that in the scripture, in the Bible, even animals, they do fast. You know that? It says here in, in John chapter 2 verse 7, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, and let them call out mightily to God. I don't know how they're going to do that, but it's in the scripture. Now if you're going to study the, the, the church history, you know, John Knox, for example, there, these are the reformers, John Knox, the, from the Presbyterian, John Calvin from the Reformed, John Wesley from the Methodist, they all advocated for fasting. And not to mention, of course, Pastor Nelly and Tima of the end of They all advocated the prayer of fasting. It's not also obvious, you know. I think what is he's doing that. Don't worry. Alright. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, there are at least three things. Okay, everybody say three. There are three things that I want you to understand 
Okay, about fasting. Very important. Very basic, yet very important. Important. The first one is this. Fasting must be done for God. Fasting must be done for God. That is quite simplistic, but let me tell you, a lot of people, they forget that. Oh, they don't understand that. We don't do fasting to, take the take to, to, to get the things that we want in this life. We don't do fasting to, to get our car, our dream car. We don't do fasting to get our dream house. We don't do fasting. We're not going to do fasting to get the new iPhone 7. Oh. Are you with me? You're not going to do fasting, okay, to get the relationship that you want. <laughs> motive, okay? The ultimate motive that we have in fasting. And not even the, the way to lose weight or to get the ideal weight that we want. That's not the reason why we do fasting. And I hope that that will not be our reason, your reason, as you do the prayer and fasting next week. Actually, these things were rebuked. This motives of doing fasting was rebuked by the Lord through Prophet Zechariah. It says here, Ask all the people of the land, was it really for me that you fasted? Was it really for me that you fasted? The Lord Himself rebuked His people through Prophet Zechariah. Fasting must be done for God, not to manipulate Him, not to twist His hand so that we can get what we have. Are we getting this? This guy said, Richard Foster, I don't know if you know him, to use good things to our own ends is always the sign of what? False religion. We must do fasting for God. For Him alone. For Him alone. So that we could, the reason why we do fasting, you know what's the reason, why, what should be the reason? Why we should do fasting so that we could spend more time with Him. So that we can be more intimate with Him. So that our spiritual antenna would be like this, big. Although you're using cables now, I know. <laughs> but, you know, 20 years ago probably, some of you, you're familiar with this. That's the reason, so that our spiritual antenna will become bigger, sharper, more sensitive, so that we could hear God, His direction, His will, His plan in our lives. But sad to say, some of us, our antenna is this. This is our antenna. For the Filipinos, this is our antenna. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? I've tried it before. It's better. It's a lot better than those complicated antennas. I don't know which one. The Philippines is works, it works very well. The hammer, the steel, oh, I, I love it. It must be done for God, to hear God. To hear him so that we can be more intimate with him. You know the Apostle Paul and Barnabas? Remember the Apostle Paul was not part of the twelve? Remember that? He was not part of the twelve apostles, then but he experienced God and he asked permission from the twelve. And I do church planting in every nation Brisbane. And then instead of just you know doing his own thing without their permission, he asked their permission. Not only that, they waited for the Lord to speak, for the Holy Spirit to speak. It says here. While they were worshiping the Lord and what? Fasting. The Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit spoke, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them to do. That is the reason why we do fasting. Fasting must be done for God to know Him more, to hear Him more, to be intimate with Him. That is the reason why we should do fasting. To hear him more. 
Do we get this? Second reason is this. Fasting reveals what controls us. Fasting reveals what controls us. I remember when it was my first time to do the seven day fasting in the Philippines. It was my first time to do that. So just imagine I was really struggling. But you know what? The first day, if you've done it, you probably can relate with me. On the first day, it was easy, right? It was easy. It's nothing. On the second day, it's okay. But on the third day, the temptation will come. Can you relate? The temptation will start coming. So on the third day of my first time of, of the seven day fasting, on the third day, I got the, the greatest temptation of my life. And you know what was that? When I opened our refrigerator, I saw this one. I saw it. I saw this one. This one piece of donut. Someone left it, you know. One piece of donut. And you know, in, in, during the bread fasting, everything is delicious. Just, you know, just a, a, a piece of nut like this, it's, you know, it's, it's really tempting. So just imagine, I was looking at the, that donut like for 30 minutes. <laughs> I was praying, Lord, should I eat this or you're not, you know, you're not going to judge me if I eat this. I was trying to justify it. But praise God, I overcame. Okay, I've overcome that temptation. And you guys will experience that as well. Especially if it's your first time. You're going to experience that. But you know what? During the prayer and fasting, that's the point. During the prayer and fasting, the Lord will start revealing to you the things that controls you. And for me, it's obvious it's food. I don't know with you. Maybe some of you, it's vices. Maybe some of you, it's lust. Maybe some of you, it's pride. Maybe some of you, it's worry. Maybe some of you, to some of you, it's anger. And maybe to some of you, it is insecurity. But that's the beauty of fasting. That's the beauty when you connect with God, when you listen to Him. Because during fasting, the Lord will start revealing these things to you. And the Lord will start addressing these things to you. Now it's up to you. If you will submit yourself and, and if you will allow God to just change you. Are we getting this? You know, David said, with fasting, my soul is what? Humbled. Wow. That's what happens when you do fasting. Are you guys encouraged not to do the prayer and fasting? Yes. I hope. Or else this will be a waste of time. Are you this? You know, Jesus, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He fasted as well. For 40 days, He was tempted by the devil. We know this story. And He ate nothing during those days. But you know what? During that time, there were things that were also, again, revealed about Jesus. Do you remember this point? There were three of them, there were three temptations, but I just want to highlight this one, the, the first one. If you are the Son of God, command the stone to become bread, Satan said to him. He was being tempted. And remember what was Jesus' answer? He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And at this point, we can see who Jesus is. That he is someone who does not live by bread alone. That is a revelation. That's the kind of man, that's the kind of God, that's the kind of person Jesus is. And during prayer and fasting, it will reveal who you are. What are the things that controls you? And how deep is your faith? But don't worry. Our God is not here to condemn us, but to save us, to give us hope. But if you will just submit to Him, the Lord will reveal a lot of great things. The Lord will bring you from this level to another level. Are we getting this? The third thing is this about fasting. Fasting will be rewarded. So don't worry. Don't worry, Rashid and Helios. <laughs> fasting will be rewarded. It says here in Matthew chapter 6 that Jesus was, was telling us the right and the wrong way to do fasting. Okay? That's the context of this verse. And he, revealed to, and he told us, he told his disciples about these two things, the, the two opposites. The first one was about those people who were showing off, were, were showing off, who were showing off about what they were doing. And he said, when you fast, do not look somber 
as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their, their faces to show others their fasting. And truly I tell you, they have received the reward in full. Do you know how to interpret this verse? Basically, when you show to people that you're fasting, or when you're like that, when it's, like, when, when it's a religious thing, you know what? You, you will also receive your reward. And you know what is your reward? The praise of the people. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's what, you, that's what you're going to get. But the thing is, that's it. That's it. That's why he said, they have received already their reward in full. The praises of the people. That's how you read the text. That's it. If you show up, if you do it religiously, just like that, without from, it's not from the heart in here, don't worry, you're going to get your reward. The praises of the people. But the problem is, that's it. Nothing else. Nothing more. But look at the opposite. He said, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, okay, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. The thing here is that, is this, who will give you the reward? Not the people. Who will give you the reward? The Father, our Father in Heaven, our God who sees the things that are done in secret. You will get your reward not from people, but from God Himself. Are we getting this? Fasting will be rewarded, especially if it's done from the heart, sincerely, unseen. The Bible says, Jesus said, it will be rewarded. Not just by the praises of the people. Maybe some people will not see it, will not even notice it. But don't worry. If you do it from your heart, sincerely, you do it for God, you spend more time with Him, you, you, you become more intimate with Him, don't worry. You will be rewarded. Because when you hear God, for sure, you will be okay. You know, move, before moving to a country, like for example, when we were deciding to go to, to the nation of Laos, and even coming back to the Philippines, I prayed for two years. Just to move from, from Laos to, to the Philippines, back to the Philippines. I could have stayed in Laos for, for longer. But you know what? I prayed to God. I prayed. It took me two years just to pray. Because you know what? If, if, if it, it has the blessing of God, I am sure, I'm confident it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be easy for me. Are you getting this? And that is, praying fast, it will be rewarded. You remember Esther? Everybody say Esther. <laughs> Esther prayed that, he would have, that she would have an appointment you know, before the king. That she would have, be given the opportunity to talk to the king. And, give, and present the case of the Israelites. And because of that, if, if the king... Uh, gives her favor that the entire Israelite will be saved. Okay, will be spared. And what Esther did and, and her people did. It says here, everybody need to be. What do we go? Go gather together all the Jews and fast for three days. And I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. Okay, even though it's, it's against the law, as long as you're connected with God. You have the blessing of God, you're going to be okay. Everything is possible. And if I perish, I perish, she said. And fast forward, says here, then the king asked, what is it, Queen Esther? That was big deal during that time. The king asking you, what do you need? She was just asking for an appointment. But what she received? She received something greater, something big. The reward was greater. The king himself asked him, I her, what do you need? What is your request? Even after half the kingdom, it will be given to you. That is the fruit. That is the reward of fasting. Because God is with you. You know, France, at one point in short, in history, they were, they were planning to invade Great Britain. And when the people of Great Britain heard about this, they started praying. They started Praying, praying and fasting. And you know what? What happened? They were rewarded. The plan of France to invade Great Britain was averted. It was averted. Because of what? Prayer and fasting. Do you know my wife? Her name is Donna, by the way. Do you know my wife? She's a product of my prayer and fasting. Yes. You know, in the Philippines, if you're 
the Filipinos can probably understand this more. In the Philippines, the ideal man is like this. Tall, <laughs> dark, the guy in the middle, and handsome. That's the ideal guy, okay, in the Philippines. And imagine me, you know, in Tagalog, sakto lang, you know, sakto lang. So me, being sakto lang, or just, you know, just so-so, okay, when it comes to looks. So I really prayed hard. I, I even fasted. Seriously, I fasted to pray for this. I, I'm just kidding, but I'm, I'm like God. But seriously, I, I fasted to pray for my wife. Lord, I hope that she will look beyond. <laughs> beyond the looks. Okay. Lord, I hope that she will just you know, forget the tall, forget the, the handsomeness, that she will just you know, settle for a guy with a dark skin. And that's me. <laughs> and praise God, the Lord has rewarded me. Praise God, the Lord has rewarded me. And let me tell you this, the Lord will reward you as well. I remember when we were in Singapore in one of the Apex, yeah, Apex gatherings, we went to this no, what's it, what's that? no signboard Stephen House. Do you know that? We've been to Singapore. So it was really a, a, a special restaurant for seafood. So someone treated us, a family treated us. So we were all pastors there. And it was, I forgot, eight or several courses. So like eight courses of seafood. So I was really hungry. So, on the first course, I ate a lot. On the second course, I ate more. On the third course, I ate more. But I didn't know it was an eight course thing, you know? And they were s serving the best, like the lobster, the Sri Lankan lobster, you know, seven and eight course, at least seven and eight course. So, by the time they serve the lobster, I was ready food. Yeah. And I learned my lesson. And sometimes we are like that. You know what? Most of the time, we are consumed with temporary. Without knowing there are greater rewards if we will only exercise discipline of praying and fasting. Let me end with this. It says here I have 10 minutes. You know in the Philippines I preach for two hours. No, just kidding. <laughs> And I don't want to offend you. And I want to be invited again. <laughs> Let me end with this. To wrap this up. There's this guy in, this, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. His name is Jehoshaphat. Have you encountered him? King Jehoshaphat. He was 34 years old when he became king of Judah. He was the fourth king of Judah. I can say he was a good king. Okay? He was an awesome, awesome king. But he, at one point in his rulership, he faced the greatest battle of his life. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 2, it says here, three nations joined forces against him, against them. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Meonites unite, okay? <laughs> they came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you. Good news. Wow. And, and you know, I love pictures. If you, if you notice in my preaching, I would always use pictures just to show you how this probably looked like during this time. It probably looked like this. The Bible says half a million. Half a million soldiers. So imagine you have this soldiers coming after you, marching towards your camp. What are you going to feel? It's okay if they're just like minions. <laughs> if they're just no minions, that's probably it's just okay. But how about if they are like stormtroopers? So, Jehoshaphat got scared. He got scared. Imagine. Dun, 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 dun. The scripture 
this said, <laughs> okay, God scared. The scripture said that Jehoshaphat was afraid. <coughs> Jehoshaphat was afraid. I don't know what you maybe some of you you have fear. Sometimes, you know, when I think about the future of my kids, I fear. Lord, what will happen to them? I hope they will get, you know, they will be get married with someone who's just like me. No, just yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Instead of panicking, instead of doing things himself, he humbled himself. He was a great king, okay? Good king, but he humbled himself. And the scripture said this, that Jehoshaphat was afraid, good thing, okay, sometimes it's good to be afraid, because if you're not, then you are, you're going to be arrogant. Whenever I preach this, I, I, I always feel this, you know, I, I, I always feel nervous, and that's good. Why? Because it makes you, keeps you humble. Yeah, Again, right. this. <coughs> the judgment was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord, pray, and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And because he sought the Lord in prayer and fasting, what happened? The Lord spoke. And the Lord said, listen. Everybody say, listen. <laughs> Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Imagine if this, this words came from, from the Lord himself, what would you feel? If the Lord spoke to you and telling you, don't worry, my friend, don't worry. I got you. It is my battle, not yours. Just relax. Come on. You're, you're too stiff. Just, be, just relax. It's mine. It's my battle. It's not yours. And it came directly from the Lord. If it came from me, yeah, probably you may consider it. But you know what? It's different if it's from the Lord. Are we getting this? It's, it's special if it's from the Lord and you heard yourself directly from Him. Are we getting this? It's, it's special. And after that, after praying and fasting, after hearing God, you know what? What Jehoshaphat did, which I, I hope that you guys do as you do the prayer and fasting, he started worshiping the Lord. Jehoshaphat said, Jehoshaphat appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise Him in holy a time and they sing this very classic song. You know this song? Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Tan, 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 tan. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Tan, 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 tan. Sing praise. Sing praise, sing praise. Dun, 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 dun. That's what Joshua did. He prayed and fast. Even in the midst of the stormtroopers, problems, the greatest battle of his life, he found strength in God. And I hope, I do hope that you may do the same thing. And this is what the Lord did. This is what the Lord did. And when they began to sing praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. Half a million people perished. Why? What was their weapon? Prayer, fasting, and worship. One thing. Before I leave, remember this. Seek the Lord. Next week, simple. I don't want to complicate it. Seek the Lord through prayer and fasting. Did you get the message? Yeah.